Hi there, my name is Scott. Welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100. Uh, I do uh, videos uh, on the Thursdays uh, every week on this collab channel, or mo almost every week. Uh, I've been reviewing a lot of uh, new theatrical films lately, uh, but I'd like to talk about Curtis Hansen this week. He passed away a few days ago. Curtis Hansen was a um, film director. His career stretches all the way back to 1973, the era I was born, actually, with his first feature film. Um, he started to get a lot of uh, positive attention in 1992 with his uh, thriller, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, with Rebecca de Mornay and Annabelle Sciorra. Uh, he went on to work with Meryl Streep and Kevin Bacon, David Strathairn, and John C. Riley in The River Wild. Uh, he has directed Eight Mile. Uh, he directed Wonder Boys with Michael Douglas and Francis McDormand. He then went on to uh, work with Tony Collette and uh, Cameron Diaz in the uh, drama In Her Shoes, uh, with the Eric Bana and Drew Barrymore in Lucky You. And the last film that he directed was Chasing Mavericks, which uh, I don't know much about, I'm afraid. Uh, I believe it's a surfing movie with Gerard Butler as the main character. But the pinnacle, you could say, of his directorial career is, of course, 1997's L.A. Confidential. Um, this is uh, based on a novel by James Elroy and that was adapted extraordinarily skillfully by Brian Helgeland, who won an Oscar for Best Adapted Screenplay. Um, the uh, top billed star was Kevin Spacey, who won Best Actor in 1999 uh, for uh, American Beauty. Uh, Russell Crowe, who won the Oscar the following year for, um, <laughs> for Gladiator, and if uh, Guy Pierce had won Best Actor for Memento the year after that. That would have been a very neat hat trick. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Um, but, you know, good news, obviously, for Denzel Washington, who did win the Oscar that year. Uh, of course, uh, Kim Basinger, James Cromwell, Danny DeVito are some of the other people in this movie. Um, also, the um, lead actor from The Mentalist television show has a small part in this. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Um, so, yeah, this is a fantastic movie. Um, and... Uh, I, in my opinion, certainly Curtis Hansen's best film. Um, the uh, top drawer talent in this really makes it uh, an extraordinary uh, uh, movie. Um, it's a crime drama. Um, it's uh, got some thriller aspects to it, a sort of mystery, uh, uh, if you will, uh, involving a uh, shooting. Uh, it takes place in the uh, 40s, I think. I can't remember the exact year, I'm afraid. Um, anyway, um, the uh, kickoff of the story is there's a gangster named Mickey Cohen who gets uh, sent up in prison uh, on federal in income tax evasion, much like Al Capone. And that leaves an opening for uh, other organized crime figures to, uh, to kind of fill the void in power. Um, so there's a lot of shenanigans involving um, uh, the cops uh, accidentally... Um, well, not really accidentally, but uh, they end up beating up some people in while they were in police custody, and that puts a big stain on the department, so that uh, enables um, a, uh, uh, a rising star, basically, named Ed Exley, who's played by Gear Guy Pierce, to um, get a promotion, uh, much to the uh, dismay of some of the other... Um, uh, police officers in this department uh, because it involves him testifying against them. Um, some of the people that get screwed over are Russell Crowe's partner, Dick Stenslin. Uh, he is forced to retire early, uh, a year away from his pension, uh, and Russell Crowe is not happy about his partner getting screwed over despite the fact that Dick Stenslin is a really, really bad police officer. Kevin Spacey's character is um, Jack Vincennes. Uh, he is um, a homicide... Uh, no, wait, is he vice... No, he's narcotics, sorry. He starts off in narcotics, but he gets transferred to vice, uh, which is like busting prostitutes and what have you, um, which uh, also uh, keeps him away from his uh, favorite uh, aspect of his job, which is to be a technical advisor on a dragnet-like television show. Um, so um, they're all looking to um, not only uh, get back at, uh, at uh, Ed Exley, but uh, also to uh, make good and give their careers uh, the lift that they need um, in order to, um, you know, sort of uh, get in the good graces back of the public and the uh, L.A. Police Department. Uh, but then something really catastrophic happens. There's um, shooting at a cafe called the Night Owl, um, and one of the people that gets killed is Dick Stensland, um, Russell Crowe's partner. Russell Crowe's character is by the name is, uh, his name is Bud White. Um, if this is getting really complicated, I apologize for that. This is just the start of all the twists and turns in the storyline. The novel has many more characters and many more story threads, so they all had to be pared down, really, to just the essentials in order to uh, make this a coherent 
coherence and enjoyable film, and they did that spectacularly well. It's a very, very great adaptation. I say that despite the fact not having read the book, um, just because you don't have to have read the book in order to understand what's going on here. It's all very clear. It all works really, really well. Um, and it's a, a, a terrific movie, really fantastic. Um, like I said, it's a terrific cast. Uh, Kim Basinger, of course, also in the movie. She won Best Supporting Actress for this movie. It's just a, a, a real weird situation that no one else was even nominated in the acting categories for this movie. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of strange. Um, but uh, then again, there were some pretty stiff competition that year as far as Titanic and Goodwill Hunting. They were like the, um, the big Oscar favorites. And LA Confidential was certainly up there. It got nine nominations. In fact, when Billy Crystal did his opening number where he sings about each of the Best Picture nominees, he one of his lines is, LA Confidential, you could be the iceberg tonight, meaning it could maybe win out over uh, Titanic. I'm like, well, that's not going to happen. It's a great movie, but that's not going to happen. Titanic is much, much too popular. Um, so I had rewatched this the other day. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, all the acting is really great. You know, there's some good shootouts and suspenseful scenes and um, probably one of the all-time great sudden deaths uh, in a film. If you've uh, seen The Departed, you know the kind of uh, thing that I'm talking about. And I won't spoil, of course, what happens there, but it's, it's, it's a great moment. Really, really great moment in a really terrific movie. Uh, so yeah, recommend that one highly. Um, I also uh, really like uh, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle as well. That's a really good pulpy thriller. Um, and I didn't see, yeah, I think I saw both of the movies that he made after uh, L.A. Confidential. No, no, no. Sorry. Yeah, there's like five movies he made after L.A. Confidential. And I think I saw four of them. Never did see Chasing Mavericks. I guess it just didn't appeal to me. Um, I don't know that much about it, like I said. But L.A. Confidential, definitely one that you ought to take a look at if you haven't already. It's really, really terrific. Um, and uh, it's a shame that Curtis Hansen, I believe he was sick for quite a while, and that's uh, he uh, he passed away because of his illness. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, definitely the high point of his career, so definitely take a look at that one if you haven't already. Um, thanks very much for watching. I appreciate it. And um, if you uh, haven't subscribed to our channel already, I hope you do so. And uh, check the link uh, below for our Facebook page. Um, please uh, offer suggestions. Uh, for uh, actors, actresses, directors, uh, genres, or series that we could focus on. We got a request to um, focus on a particular director, and hopefully we'll be doing that uh, very, very soon. Hopefully some of the other guys that have been absent for a while will want to join in on that. We're working that out. Um, thanks again for watching. I'll see you again real soon. Take it easy.